Hi everyone, my name is Justin Odisho and in this video I'm going to show you how to make any effect react to audio automatically in Adobe After Effects. So if you're enjoying these videos, make sure to leave a like below and don't forget to subscribe if you're new so you don't miss any of my new videos. Also, you guys can follow me on Instagram at Justin Odisho. If you want to reach out to me, I'm real active on there. So to begin, let's recreate this scene that we saw in the beginning example. And there's many ways to create new compositions. You can create them by new composition and make them whatever duration and length you like. But if you just drag something like a song onto the timeline, then the composition will last exactly as long as that song was. So I have a couple things in the project media bin. I've got a song and then I've got a video clip just for some nice background imagery. And then let's create a text layer. So I'll go to layer, new text, and you can type out whatever you want. In this case, I'm going to type out React. The font that I'm using is called Great Shadow. And if you go to the Align menu, I can center it both horizontally and vertically. So now let's get the information from our song. So if we right click on the MP3 file and go to Keyframe Assistant, we can automatically have After Effects convert the audio to keyframes. And what that'll do is make a new audio amplitude layer. And what this has in it is keyframes based on how loud the audio is. So if you hit the drop down arrow on the effects section, you'll see there's a left, right, and both channels. So if for any reason, you know how some songs have certain things playing in the left ear and not in the right ear, and you wanted to separate those, you could. In this example, I'm just gonna use both channels. So you can either mute these or even just outright delete them if they're distracting. And if I drop this down one more time, you can see there's literally a keyframe for every single second of the beat. So if we want to see that in graph position, you can select the slider to highlight everything and then press this graph editor here. And this represents the song. It starts off slow and then the drop is right here. You can also see it's measured in units from about zero to 50. So the quiet stuff, it's around eight to 10 units. And then the loud hits of the beat or drum are more around 40 and 50 units. And we can use that information to help us later. So how do we use all of this information that we just generated from the song to control our effects? It's pretty simple really, and you can use it on literally any effect. So the possibilities are endless. Let's drop down our React layer, for example, and pretty much every layer comes with some transform options like scale, position, opacity. So let's say we wanted to make the text bounce to the beat by increasing the scale. All you have to do is hold Alt or Option and press on the scale keyframe. And what that'll do is enable expression keyframes. You see all these options came in here for us to type an expression. But what we can also do is use this little pick whip expression, which is the swirl, and click and drag that line onto the slider. So now when I play that back, you'll see that the scale is reacting directly to the music, but it's reacting in a zero to 100 type of way, and it's not exactly how we want that to happen. So what we can do is go back to that expression and just add a little addition onto the end of it to adjust it to our needs. So right now it's saying, temp temp is the value and that's going to change based on the value of the audio. So as you saw in the graph, it might go from zero to 50. But what we can do is add a plus and add a hundred to the X and Y. That means the text will stay the original hundred percent size that we started it as on top of some additional bumps from the music. So now you can see it's much more normal how we want it. Additionally, you might find that your keyframes are a bit jumpy depending on audio. It's reacting in ways that you don't want. Maybe you only want to react to the loud kicks. And what we can do in this case is smooth things out a bit on the slider using an expression as well. So if we hold Alt and press on the keyframe for this as well, we'll open up the expression channel and we can use a simple expression to ease the keyframes. Something like ease and then add a parentheses value comma and then I'm going to input zero 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 and explain to you what these four values are and we can adjust them. So let's start with the first two zeros. This is basically what range are we looking at within the audio expression. So when you open this graph we can tell it to only consider things from a certain value to a certain value. So if I start only considering things above 20 you'll see that the audio won't cause an effect until the beat drops. So let's say I could do 20 to 50. 
So I'll turn off the graph editor and go back to edit that expression. And let's do 20 to 50. That's the ranges that we're going to consider. And now the second half is what do you want those ranges that you're considering to be? So consider 20 to 50 to add a 0 to 100 effect. So now we've set a new limit that 20 is going to be considered 0 and anything below it, and 50 and anything above it is going to be considered 100. Now when I play that back, you'll see that the audio doesn't really react in the beginning because it doesn't reach that threshold that we set. Only when the beat drops over here do you see it start to react. And it's a lot more stiff with it. It doesn't react to every little change in the music. So you can play around with these values and try to fine tune them. And another last thing you can do is use the smoother panel. So let's say you can highlight your keyframes and try to smooth them with, let's say, a tolerance of 10 and press apply. And what that'll do is it'll look at your keyframes and it'll just blend them together a bit. So you can see the whole first half kind of blends together and it spaces the keyframes out a little bit. So if you're looking for some type of smoother motion, you can play around with the smoothing, but often I've found that it kind of makes things go off beat unless you really play around with and get the perfect tolerance. But it's there if you want to use it. And the really cool part about this is you can literally use these audio amplitude keyframes for everything. Let's say you were to apply any of the effects in the effects panel onto your clip, like brightness and contrast. You can literally make anything with a stopwatch keyframe react to the slider that you created earlier. So I'll hold Alt, I'll click on the brightness, and I'll say, make the brightness controlled by the audio as well. So now you'll see, as the music flashes, you'll also get a brightness and contrast flash. And you can see the, the red value here go up. Right now it's at five, but at the certain hits of the beat, it gets much higher, like 30, 50, whatever. The specific combo I used in the beginning example was brightness contrast and a bit of a channel blur. So this gives you that 3D blurring lens effect, that channel separation. So I could add some red blurriness, make it only horizontal, and then alt click it, grab the pick whip, and make that controlled by the slider. And now the blurriness will also only be present at loud or large hits or bass moments of the beat. So that's how you can control any effect with automatic audio keyframes in Adobe After Effects. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like below. Let me know what you thought in the comments. And subscribe to my channel if you're not yet to stay tuned for all of my new videos. Go follow me on Instagram if you want to reach out to me. I'm real active on there. And once again, thank you guys so much for watching. And I'll see you next time.